We now work through a second example in which we both find and classify a function's stationary points using its derivative. The example is the one we see here. We're asked to find and classify any stationary points along the curve defined as y which equals to x to the power of 3 minus 3x minus 2. To get started, let me move the question to the side, like so. To find and classify this curve's stationary points, we're going to follow the same three-step method that we saw in the first tutorial. So the first step, step one, is to find this curve's stationary points. And to do that, we need to solve dy dx equals to zero. Our function is y equals to x to the power of three minus three x minus two. Using the power rule to differentiate this, we find dy dx equals to 3x squared minus 3. So to solve dy dx equals to 0 is the same thing as solving 3x squared minus 3 equals to 0. We now have a quadratic equation to solve, and we can notice right away that we can place 3 as a factor, so that's 3 times x squared minus 1 equals to 0, and the product of 3 and x squared minus 1 will only equal to 0 if x squared minus 1 equals to 0. That leads to x squared equals to 1, which leads to two possible values of x, x equals to negative 1, and x equals to 1. And so at this stage, we can already state that this function has two stationary points, one of which has an x-coordinate equal to negative 1, the other has an x-coordinate of 1. To be able to claim that we've actually found this function's stationary points, we need to calculate their y-coordinates. And to do that, we replace every x we see inside our function by negative 1, and then we'll do it for 1. When x equals to negative 1, y will equal to negative 1 raised to the power of 3 minus 3 times negative 1 minus 2. That's equal to negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1, minus 3 times negative 1, which is negative 3 minus 2. That's equal to negative 1 plus 3 minus 2 and calculating from left to right, we find that y equals to zero. So the stationary point with x coordinate negative one has y coordinate zero. So we can already state that one of the stationary points is negative one zero. We now calculate the y coordinate of the second stationary point, which has x coordinate equal to one. So I write when x equals to one, y will equal to one raised to the power of three minus three times one minus two. That's equal to 1 cubed, which is equal to 1, minus 3 times 1, which is 3, minus 2. And calculating this from left to right, we find that this equals to negative 4. And we can now state that the second stationary point has coordinates 1, negative 4. And in fact, I'll go ahead and box both of those stationary points. All right, now that we know the coordinates of the stationary points, we move on to step 2. And in step 2, we need to study the sign of this function's derivative. And to do that, we use a sign table. And here's how I make that. I start by making a top row, something looking like this. And this is to represent the various values of x. Looking at our function, y equals to x cubed minus 3x minus 2, this is perfectly well defined for all real numbers. And to highlight that fact, I write negative infinity all the way up to positive infinity on that top row. Now I add the values of x at which this function has stationary points. Remember, we found those in step one. Those are x equals to negative one and x equals to one. So I'll go ahead and place a negative one here and a one right there. Now that that's done, I make columns for my table. I draw a vertical line right after the x, like so. And I also draw vertical lines directly below the values of x at which this curve has stationary points. I now add this table's next row, and that's for dy dx. There we go. This row serves to study the sign of the derivative. In other words, our objective right now is to figure out whether or not dy dx is positive or negative here, positive or negative here, and positive or negative here. This first cell corresponds to x values between negative infinity and negative 1. The second cell, x values between negative 1 and 1. And last but not least, this third cell corresponds to x values greater than 1. So here's how this works. We found in step one that dy dx equals to zero when x equals to negative one and x equals to one. And I highlight that fact by adding a zero right here and right here. 
on those vertical lines. And we now work from left to right to figure out whether or not dy dx is positive or negative between negative infinity and negative one, all we have to do is calculate dy dx at any random number between negative infinity and negative one. And any number will do. You could choose negative five, negative three, negative 50, but I'll make it simple and calculate dy dx when x equals to negative two. Remember, our expression for dy dx is right here. I'm boxing it in yellow right now. And so when x equals to negative two, dy dx is equal to three times negative two squared minus three, and that's equal to three times negative two squared, which is four minus three. And that leads us to dy dx is equal to three times four, which is 12 minus three, which is nine. So we find when x equals to negative two, dy dx equals to nine. And what matters here is the fact that that's positive, as that allows us to go ahead and state that for all x values between negative infinity and negative one, dy dx is positive. So I put a plus sign in my table. Next, I need to figure out whether dy dx is positive or negative for x values between negative one and one. And I'm gonna go ahead and make my life very easy and choose x equals to zero. When x equals to zero, dy dx equals to three times zero squared minus three, and we quickly see that dy dx equals to negative three. And we see here that when x equals to zero, dy dx is negative. And that tells us that dy dx will be negative for all x values between negative one and one. So I can go ahead and put a minus sign in my table. Last but not least, I need to figure out whether dy dx is positive or negative for x values greater than one. So I'll go ahead and calculate dy dx when say x equals to two. So I'll just write that here, when x equals to two. Now in this case, dy dx will be equal to three times two squared minus three. That's equal to three times four minus three. That's equal to 12 minus three. So dy dx will equal to nine. And the fact that nine is positive allows us to state that dy dx will be positive for all x values greater than one. And I add a plus sign to my table. And that's our second step done. At this stage, we know exactly how the sign of the derivative dy dx changes as we go from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. And so we move on to our third and final step. And in this step, we're going to classify each of the two stationary points at negative one zero and one negative four. And here's how I do that. In this third row of my table, I write y. And that's the y which refers to our function here. We can see that from negative infinity to negative one, dy dx is positive. Consequently, our curve must be increasing. In other words, going upwards. And I show that with this arrow pointing up. When x equals to negative one, the curve reaches a stationary point. And remember, we found in step one that its coordinates are negative one, zero. So I write those coordinates in the table, negative one, zero. Then from negative one to one, we can see that the derivative dy dx is negative. That means that the curve must be going downwards. So I show an arrow pointing downwards like so. When x equals to one, the curve reaches its second stationary point. And we saw that it has coordinates one, negative four. So I add that to my table like so, one, negative four. Finally, for x values greater than one, we found dy dx is positive. That means that the curve must be increasing, and I show that by drawing an arrow pointing upwards, like so. Looking at our table now, things are very clear. As x varies from negative infinity all the way up to positive infinity, we can see that our curve increases, reaches a maximum at negative one, zero, then shoots back downwards and reaches a minimum at one negative four. It then shoots back upwards. In other words, we can see quite clearly here that the stationary point negative one zero is a maximum and the stationary point one negative four is a minimum. So I'll just go ahead and write negative one zero, two dots is a maximum and one negative four is a minimum. And there we have it. We've now answered the question and we've definitely found and classified this function's stationary points. Now, although it's not asked, if we wanted to, we could quickly sketch or plot the curve y equals to x cubed minus three x minus two, just to actually see what it is we're dealing with here. Something looking like this. 
Now looking at this, we can see quite clearly that the curve definitely has a local maximum point with coordinates negative 1, 0, and we can see that it has a local minimum point with coordinates 1, negative 4. Furthermore, we can also see that as x varies from negative infinity to positive infinity, the curve is definitely going upwards, reaches a maximum, goes back downwards, reaches a minimum, and shoots back upwards. And it's often nice to see the curve this way to confirm our results. And there we have it. That's the end of this second example. In our next example and next tutorial, we'll be finding and classifying the stationary points of a slightly more complicated curve than the ones we've seen so far. So don't hesitate and start watching that now.